Father, 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 can you kindly tell these people? Because they understand that the majority of the people watching are people that are just getting in the game. Okay. And where did you start trucking at? I started trucking back in the 90s, but first I gotta put this out there. Okay. This is Papa Bear. I'm true to this, not new to this, okay? <laughs> Coming at you with my son, Trucker Brown, okay? My second son, Trucker Brown, okay? Proud of it and stuff. That's I know he got. looked like me, it's okay. Somebody has to bear this curse, okay? It's all good. <laughs> it might as well be him. Exactly what but, it is. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, curses can be good too, okay? I don't well, know though, okay. But <laughs> it's all good. But I truck started trucking back in the nineties with Snyder National. Snyder. Driving I just thought it was Swift. Hey, I never drove a Swift. I never wanted to. So, as a matter of fact, Swift came years after Snyder. Mm. Okay. I was out there was uh, out there when Swift started and MS Carrier was out there. They started at the same time. MS Carrier. Oh yeah. Young Buck. <laughs> But anyway, <laughs> I didn't say I didn't know who they was. <laughs> okay. I have no idea. MS Carrier was another carrier that started around the time Swift did. Okay, this was back in the nineties, and um, MS Carrier just didn't didn't make it for whatever reason I don't know, and everything. But you know, you hear a lot of scuttlebutt for those who know what that means, rumors about companies why they did this and do that, and there was a lot of bad companies out there. Mm -hmm. But uh, um, but uh, Swift. You know, maintained and now, you know, they're, they're one of what the What division, top. well, if you were Schneider, you was drive van. I was drive van, but they had also had, they also had drive van, they had a flatbed, and then they also had a, 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 the glass division where they hauled the glass, the big glass. Yeah, I don't want to deal with that. Stuff, so. Yeah. So, you, so you did the drive van? I did the drive van and the 89 International. Had the doghouse in the middle for those of y'all brothers out there know what that means. Doghouse. Doghouse. Young buck, but anyway, at the doghouse, if you've driven a cab over, an old '89 International cab over, ain't none of my subs okay. know what a doghouse is. All right, it had a doghouse in the middle. If you don't know what a doghouse is, talk to somebody who's driven a cab over. Okay, they'll tell you what a doghouse is. That's the sleeper. Sleeper was in the back. Doghouse was up here in the front. So the doghouse housed the engine. Remember, it's a cab over. Where is the cab? Where the engine gonna go? Mm -hmm. Gonna go up underneath, underneath the cab. So the doghouse housed the top half of the engine. Mm -hmm. Okay, and it was in, and it was underneath that. It was like a big old platform since those internationals were so wide. It was like a big old hump that fit right over the engine mm. and stuff. And okay, so wouldn't that be hot? If, if the doghouse insulation uh, fell off and everything, but it wasn't bad. Did you have AC? Oh yeah, we had AC, yeah. Power steering? Yeah, we had power steering. I wasn't that far back, son. <laughs> I'm just asking. Like, oh, like, oh, oh. Okay, <laughs> all right, okay, stick to driving, okay? Okay. Make comedian and not your thing, okay? <laughs> so, so, okay, you had that, you had power steering. Yeah, power steering, electricity, uh, you know, I mean, uh, um, all the all the comforts, name. all the comforts, okay. all the comforts of Jake Brake. Um, some of the trucks, Jake Brakes were starting to be more popular back then. So how did y'all do it before y'all had Jake Brakes? <laughs> With your damn foot in the brake and timing and being smart and everything. Trucking ain't just start just start happening. Drivers been driving were driving without Jake Brakes long long before they had uh, uh, Jake Brakes in here. And I was driving through the mountains and everything, Carolina and all that, and Carolina and California. And you, it was okay. But was it an air ride suspension? Yeah, you know, some trucks had air ride. The truck I had was air ride. Yeah, it was air ride, but it didn't have air ride on the cab. But it had air ride on the seat. Oh, well, what you mean it happened on the cab? Y'all didn't have the bags on the whole. No. So well, what did y'all use then? You just bouncing around? Air ride on the seat and air ride on the uh, on the on the chassis on the truck chassis. That sounds like torture. Dude. It, it was what it was, but guess what it was 30 years before that? Yeah, I mean, they had the coffin sleepers okay. and all that. Yeah, crap. exactly. And they had a lot of them, a lot of the guys when they switched started had two stick shifts in the truck and everything because how the gear ratio was. They had two, they had the up and lower gears, and they had to switch over to another shift to start going. And they didn't have air ride seats 
and air conditioning and the comforts of home and stuff like that like we got now. We spoiled now. <laughs> Okay. I ain't spoiled. I'm a hard runner. Okay. All right. I could have ran them things on my eyes closed. Uh, okay. After the first 50 miles in one of them old <laughs> joints, he'd be ready to pull over here to hotel. Okay. <laughs> no. Nah, no. Nah. I never rode, drove one of them old, old trucks. But so, those what, were your real truckers. What was the money like in the 90s? I mean, because we got to uh, account for inflation. Like, Whatever right. you were getting was worth more at the time, anyway. Well, a lot of people say it was better, but I don't look at it as being much better because with the with the facts that of inflation and everything, and the higher cost of living and and all that stuff, it all balances out. Mm -hmm. If you're bringing in as an owner operator, I, I don't know what you're bringing in as a company driver mm -hmm. and stuff. I haven't done that in a while, but as an owner operator, if you're bringing in after overhead. And you're an ultra owner operator, you're out there on your own truck, on your own trailer, and you're out there running, and you're bringing in four grand a week, you're doing good. Average. You're After about, gross. Average, you had about 28, 31, 30 something hundred dollars. Average, about that. Some days you can do more, some weeks you can do more. It just depends on you dealing with the broker and you got a broker that's not trying to screw you mm -hmm. and not pay you after you do the runs. Uh, and stuff, which is a lot of them out there that, that that will not pay you after you do the runs and you sitting there waiting for weeks and weeks on your pay on a run you already did. Mm. Remember, there is a list of those type of brokers that you can pull up on the internet of the brokers or the bad brokers. I don't know the name of it off the top of my head. I have to talk to my boy and get that information. And uh, next time I talk, I'll put it on my channel out mm -hmm. there uh, for you people that are running that that knows about these people that uh, that will not pay you there's a list of them you put them on this better business bureau they're on this list and uh and those people i wouldn't fool with mm -hmm. most of them out there pretty honest will pay you if you had a choice would you rather deal with a broker personally yeah um containers uh it's okay get with the right company but right now I don't think it's any right company because ain't nobody paying no money and too many hands in the pot mm. and nobody want to pay I go to Richmond Virginia I mean Richmond Virginia from Norfolk for three maybe 340 at the best maybe 350 I go to a broker to pull the same load from Norfolk to Richmond I could get $900 mm. you see what I'm saying too many hands in the pot too many hands in, too the, many pot. Hands in the pot and nobody wants to pay the driver and driver got maintenance fees and all that and everything that needs to be done in the truck. And nobody wants to pay, but you know, they want you to run. Then they want to treat you like your company driver. Ain't nobody trying to do that. Mm -mm. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nobody trying to hear that bull crap, you know? Ain't nobody trying to get out here and run no truck and be treated like no company driver and everything. Don't want to be respectful, want to talk to you any kind of way. And you wonder why bad stuff happened to people. <laughs> Okay, I'm not even gonna get into that. Yeah. <laughs> okay, because I know my temperament. Yeah. Okay. Mess with your money. Okay, when you mess with my money, I'll mess with my people, I'll mess with my family, and stuff. So or just mess with me un unauthorized, period. It can, it can, get, it can get crazy. Okay, what it can I, get real crazy. What real I quick. do want to know is because you've been in the game for a few years, we'll give you that. <laughs> you've been in the game for a few years. Mm. I've been noticing something. Mm hmm. There's a few type of drivers, and you you tell me if you've been seeing this for years. There's your focus driver that is just like he's all about running. Sometimes they burn out because they just run themselves and they burn out. Then you got the ones who kind of want to turn the game into a nine to five, be home every day. Then you got the ones who are chasing women. I mean, I know guys who are late on their load just to get to woman in different states was it always like that tell me a story like that about a woman sick driver back in the night like, like, like what did what did you notice about that what did you, or were, were you were you a woman sick driver back in the day you just want to become unfamiliar with that finger real quick, though. <laughs> but it's okay. <laughs> I'm saying, was you, was, was you was you weak for the Bemi? Or was you about your money? I've always been about my money. Always. 
Um, and that's a weak dude. They never, they, now, so they no, it's weak. not necessarily weak. It just depends on where you come from and who you are. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing wrong with loving your family and all that. Now, if you just a guy who's a Romeo trying to be a Romeo truck driver, trying to have a woman in every state and trying to see a woman in every state, yeah, I would feel resembling. I would cough too, son, if I were you. <laughs> but, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> if you're trying to do that, you ain't going to make no money. Because being a player out here in this game, Call when you're a player, it costs money. And all these chicks out here want something. It costs to pay. And it costs to play. You know what I'm saying? Everybody think paying, playing means money. Playing means getting your hair done, getting the hair done, mm -hmm. getting the nails done, Hotel. paying the lights, paying the water, paying the mortgage or rent, Sell car no. note, car insurance. All that's pay to play stuff. You know what I'm saying? For you brothers out here who don't get it. You know what I'm saying? So it is what it is. For you sisters out here who are looking at this, y'all know I'm telling the truth. And y'all gotta watch it too, because a lot of women is driving now, and I'm sure there's some uh, some some beta male dudes who feel you be in the same situation. It ain't just a man thing. It's some it's some dudes out here want to be taken care of too. Yeah, yeah, it is, it is. So what is your advice to the 22 year old? He's single. Probably never even got a bunch of bad meat before he's now he's making a thousand fifteen hundred dollars a week. How are the women gonna how are the women going tell him how the women is going to treat him differently now he, he he's getting a check. Cause they not you they not expecting. They not expecting it. Let me tell y'all something. Okay, and this is this is the oldest oldest thing in the book. Okay? Let me tell y'all something. People treat you how you act, what your status is, who you are. If your status change, they're going to change. You know what I'm that saying? Phone. Give me that phone. They're going to change. They're going to treat you differently. That's just the way it go and everything. I don't care nothing about that personally, okay? You because, ain't because it ain't a matter of weak or strong. It's a matter of of where you are in, in, in life at that point in time. You know what I'm saying? Anybody can be weak or uh, show a signs of weakness at any time, depending on what it is. But uh, you, you, as a 22-year-old, and, and if you don't have any children, these are ifs. <laughs> if you don't have any children, you don't have a wife or girlfriend, or it's a significant other home waiting for you, uh, I would suggest you focus on making your money and stacking your cash. You know what I'm saying? So you could tell them, look, you 22 right now, you can get in this truck and do a good two years of running and stack all your bread. You don't need a place, car, nothing. You ain't got no responsibilities yet. But what I see them do, they'll come in three months, they low. They can't do it. That's because of their It's that bad me. That they chasing talent. the booty and they don't want to get the work done. Tell them the truth. They weak. Okay, son. Okay. Being the fact that you're talking loud doesn't make any more sense than anything <laughs> I want. But it's okay. They usually work. Okay. Yelling, the, yeah, well, no. there's okay. something wrong with them, too. Okay. <laughs> just call them weak, Bob. You can't get No, I'm not going to call them weak. It's just where they are and everything. You see this thing right here? Mm -hmm. Depending on what size y'all curls up to a certain, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> a little lubrication, trust me, that feeling gonna go away real quick. Man, they be in my they, they be in my live feed, they'll say, I don't gotta do that. You OTR, you ain't doing that. What do you do? You stopping? Every state? Ain't nobody. When I was OTR, state to state, Canada, I didn't give a damn about them hoes knocking on the door. I pull up in uh, uh, um, <laughs> Oklahoma, Oklahoma City. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, back yeah. in a horseshoe, okay? There's a lot of, lot of knocking on yeah, the door. Yeah, a lot of knocking on the door. But back in the 90s, it was way over. I mean, yeah. a lot of the chicks would come over or come through from the strip clubs and come over there and hoe. What? And then these were some fine beasts here. So you weren't getting no yeah. half dead ugly. No, these were some bad girls. These girls were taking care of their kids. Doing what they have to do. Then you had your ones out there was on the drugs and all that stuff too. Mm. But you know, as far as was, I was out there in Oklahoma City a couple of years ago, and believe me, the quality of uh, ass out there has dropped dramatically. <laughs> okay, dramatically. I'm talking about a 747 filled with lead from tail falling out of the sky. Okay, mm. 
that's out. So I mean, give me, give me a level of from one to ten. When you talking about, it was dimes out there knocking on the door. These were dimes. 